For the last two and a half years, I've been riding the Santa Cruz Hightower V2. It's been one of the best all-around bikes I've ever ridden from the trail to the bike park. Truly, one of my favorite bikes I've ever owned, but the time has come to say goodbye. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Rich, and today we're gonna to take a look at my brand new bike for 2022, the Transition Sentinel. This is the second generation of Transitions all around 29er, and a bike that has had my eye for a while now. I'm gonna talk a bit about why I went with the Sentinel here in just a moment, but first, let's do a quick bike check. This build has quite a few components which are completely new to me. I've been slowly acquiring the parts over the course of 2021 and I'm excited to put them to use. Let's start with the cockpit setup. These cement gray PNW limb grips are some of my favorites. They have a slim, low bulk profile and feel very comfortable and secure. I'm running the Code RSC brakes, which I had previously used on my downhill bike and I'm a huge fan of these powerful four piston stoppers. I've mated them up with SRAM's new two millimeter thick HS2 rotors, which claim to offer more heat dissipation than their previous versions. For the drivetrain, I've gone with SRAM's GX axis. I've been a holdout and skeptic of the axis wireless technology, and I've even made a short video on the reasons why previously. But you all expressed a lot of positive experiences with axis, and I listened. I decided to hold on to it, and it's time to give this a fair shot. Continuing on with the wireless theme is the Axis Reverb Dropper. I absolutely love the clean cockpit feel of wireless and a couple of you brought up a really good point in my previous Axis video. Having both also has the added benefit of having a spare battery for the derailleur should I ever find myself in need on a long ride. So Clive and John, if you're watching this, cheers guys, thanks for the suggestion. All of these parts are hanging on a Deity Speedway 35 carbon bar cut to 790 millimeters. This bar has a very comfortable 30 millimeter rise with a nine degree bend and five degree upsweep. For the stem, I gave a nod to Transition's in-house brand with a 40 millimeter anvil swage and Arctic gray. This is all capped off with the one-up EDC tool. This tool is essential on all of my trail and enduro bikes and it's gotten myself and my buddies out of the woods so many times. For the rest of the drivetrain, the GX Alloy Crankset is a durable and affordable option that performs great, and it also helps offset some of the cost of the GX axis. As always, I'm running the Crank Brother mount Enduro pedals, which have been my go-to for a while now. The X01 cassette and chain are very durable, dependable, and offer a smooth shifting feel. I've been running these on my Rebel Ranger and absolutely love them. Another big change for me this year is the RockShox Zev Ultimate, which I initially had set up at 170 millimeters, but since reduced that back to 160. I typically prefer Fox suspension products, but I've heard a lot of great things about this fork, and I've been pleasantly surprised by my Sid Lux and the Sid Ultimate that are also on my Rebel Ranger. For the rear shock, I'm running the Push Industries 11.6 coil. Push has a reputation for building some of the best dampers on the market, and I've wanted to try the 11.6 for quite some time now, so I'm very excited about this. I'm really looking forward to spending more time on both of these, and I'll be doing some in-depth reviews on them in the near future. Last but certainly not least, all of this is rolling on Spokex's new SX310 carbon wheel set, which comes with i9 Hydra hubs, and I chose their Enduro rim with the gloss finish. The a great experience on the SX310 prototypes. I'm also looking forward to giving a long-term review on these down the road. Currently, I have my light trail tires on here, with Max's Asagai 2.5 up front and the Aggressor 2.3 out back, but I'll be running all sorts of other combos throughout the year. I went with this bike for a few key reasons. The more aggressive geometry is well suited for the steep and technical terrain we love to ride at places like Windrock, Pisgah, and Snowshoe. The travel, however, is shy of the big Enduro bikes at 150-160, which helps preserve a bit of pedaling efficiency. With its 24% progression and the rear leverage curve, I can hit bigger features without as much concern for harsh bottom outs. That's something I felt a little bit limited by with my high tower. I was looking for a bike that could get me up the climbs and enduro races without sapping too much energy, but also more confidence inspiring tackling the gnarlier, big and fast lines on some of our courses. I'm just starting to get this bike dialed in, really enjoying the process. In the next episode, I'll dive into a lot of my initial thoughts and experiences riding this bike on a variety of terrain. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for all of our future reviews and adventures here on Semi Cindy. Let me know what your thoughts are on this build. Are these the components that you would spec or would you go a different route? Drop a comment below and tell me what you think. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and help share this with others who might be interested in it as well. Well, thanks for joining me today. And as always, I hope to see you out on the trail.